Hello everyone, Tina here. Welcome to my craft room. Today is usually a try it out Tuesday, but I want to switch it up just a little bit. And I wanted to share with you not only a little bit of my craft room, it's not really a tour, um, but I wanted to share with you where I store my stamps and my dies. Um, and I thought that'd be a perfect time to share with you how I store them. Um, the cubby here is actually a shoe box. <laughs> I picked up on Amazon and I, um, I turned it from horizontal to vertical to store my cardstock in. I just have some bins on top where I store my six by eight stamp sets. Um, and then to the left of that, I have my ink storage, my oxide inks and my ink pads. I got those containers at Organize More and then along with my Copic marker containers. Now the two little boxes um, I just picked up at Tuesday morning, they had a um, two of them left. I took them both home, but they are perfect to hold my brand new color essentials. This has my desk cleaner in there. Um, I just thought it was cute. <laughs> I picked it up from my local grocery store, but um, I like to spray it and clean my desk with that. There is where I create my cards um, with my camera. And then I have my little caddy that I have my scissors and uh, foam tapes in. But it's not, how I came about it is I was getting ready to file all of my product here. Sometimes if I don't have time to do it right after a video, I'll put everything in this little container. The container I just got at the dollar store. But as I was going through it, I thought there's stencils, there are embossing folders, there are slimline dies, regular dies, there are stamp sets that are four by six and six by eight. And I thought this is a perfect container to share with you how I store all of those things. Um, it's my most asked question um, in the comment section and then also emailed um, is how I store um, my my dies and stamps. So I'm gonna share with that with you today. This little caddy is um, fairly new and I'm loving it. it um, I picked it up on Amazon and it has like little flowers, rubber flowers on the inside. It's only like an inch and a half tall, but um, whatever you put in it, those, those flowers kind of grab, the, there's like silicone, but they grab and hold them vertically up. So when I do a video, it's really handy. But back to the container here. Yeah, it has um, everything I need. So I thought I'd take, instead of creating a card, um, brace yourself. It's a very, very long video, <laughs> but I do want to share with you um, the products that I use and how I store everything. Okay. So to do this, I am going to flip the camera around. We're going to go back to the drawer units and actually the drawer units that I use, um, I picked up on Amazon. Um, I, I have five of them total and they just connect together. They actually have feet, but I took the feet off, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to go ahead and open this top drawer. This has my scratch card stock in. And in the back, I have my twines and my baker's twine, but the drawer below it is where I store my stamps. Now I limit myself to a hundred stamps. I mean, it seems like a lot. Oh my gosh, hundred stamps, but a hundred fit in these bins. And um, if I if I go over, I have to do a de-stash or a purge. <laughs> so I use these little containers from Spellbinders. I've had them for a while. I love them. Um, they used to be sold all over the place, but I, I store, but they are no longer available guys. I'm so sorry, but any kind of, there's so many different kind of storage systems out there, but these little boxes are, are fabric and they work perfect for me. Six of them fit in my drawers, but I store my stamps by company all but my sentiment stamps. I like to keep those all in one bin. So that very back bin on the right side is just sentiments. Now moving over, this top drawer here is where I store some of my dies. Now these are my smaller dies um, and I store them um, with file tabs um, by sentiments and by florals or by shapes. Um, these are just little crates that I picked up at my local dollar store, but um, they fit perfectly in here too. Um, I have a back bin that usually I have some extra sequins in. Um, and some gems. And then I also put some dies that I need to file away in there too. I gotta file those. But 
yeah, I, I store them in these little pockets. Now normally I don't show these because I'm not really happy about these pockets. Um, and I'll show you that when I bring out my container. But I like the filing system, uh, the smaller size. Um, most people have the four by four like CD ones, but I wanted a little bit narrow ones, but I'm, I'm, I might switch this up a little bit in the future. So that's why I'm hesitant to share with you those. Um, these little containers, like I said, I picked up a Tuesday morning and they fit perfect. I have my brand new cardstock from Spellbinders and I love these colors. I put the scraps in these little um, pockets that I took out of a binder. Then I'll show you that binder in a little bit later. But this top drawer is where I put my my Nina, my Cougar Digital, my card bases, um, my watercolor card stock. And then also in this container here, I put my envelopes and my, my square card stock and card bases from Spellbinders. So that's that top drawer. But below it is where I store my larger dies. Um, these are where I have um, my glimmer plates, my, my everyday dies, and um, these are basically almost all on magnetic sheets. These are the con uh, storage containers that I use. Now, I know scrapbook.com, Simon Says Stamp, Amazon, all you, and Spellbinders, of course, all used to sell these, but I can't find them anymore. So I don't know if they're discontinuing them, but I just love these. Um, they even had uh, two files in the boxes that are super heavy duty. I kept them because I thought I could use them for a filing system for something else, but they come with lids. This is what the lids look like. They just pop open and they have a little tab that you can use. But I know if I put the lids on um, with these dies, it doesn't close all the way, so I just keep the lid separate. Now in the bottom drawer, this is where I have my laminator and my sticker maker, but I also have these totally Tiffany bins. Now these are some more bins that I don't think are available anymore, but I have four of them. I actually like them a lot. They're seven inches wide and they hold my six by six stamp sets um, perfectly. And then I hold my stencils and then also my larger embossing folders. Um, and I, they actually have lids, but I was having problems with the lids tearing. Let me show you this one. I tried to tape it and it looked tacky. <laughs> so I just took my scissors and just cut them off, cut, the, cut all the lids off. Um, it was easier access for me anyway. So um, that's how I store my six by six stamps my six by six um, embossing folders and my six by six um, stencils. Okay, now in this cupboard here, I'm only gonna show you the left one, um, but this is where I store, I have my little, um, my storage unit thingy that I pull out to put everything away. Um, on the, this is a little heart that my daughter drew. I thought that was so, she's an excellent drawer. Um, I have that in there every time I open it, it makes me happy. <laughs> but on the very top shelf is my watercolor stuff and my large uh, Bristol card stocks. Second shelf is my other color extra card stocks along with my pixie sprays and stuff. But this little unit I pull out when I do a video because it has my inks and my post-it note paper and my acrylic blocks. I put it on a tray so I could pull it in and out. But the container just below it is my storage container on the very bottom shelf. You can see I put my my big Mac Daddy Platinum 6. <laughs> but we're gonna grab this and I'm gonna bring it over to my craft desk and then I wanna talk a little bit about um, this little container because this is the container that I use to store things. Now, um, this is a six by eight stamp set. We'll start with this. We'll scoot this out of the way. And I use Avery L's extra large stamp and die storage pockets. Um, I do like to make a template for cardstock inserts, and I just use cheap cardstock from Walmart for my inserts. But these pockets are actually perfect for, um, I, it's a 50 pack, but they're perfect for Spellbinders large die of the month and slimline dies and also um, your six by eight stamp sets. So that's why I have these. 
we'll set those aside and then we are going to grab another package this is a small die set now um this will fit in my small die storage so it's a two piece so over here on the left of my container i have some little magnetic pockets and we're going to put those with the small die set um i do have some pockets without the magnetic sheet and another reason guys that i don't kind of recommend it because the pockets that i use um, are from totally tiffany but they are totally cheap <laughs> um, they tear a lot so um, the price the price point is fabulous but i just use the spellbinder small tab sets there's 10 in each package and um, I can slide them, I have to trim them a little bit, but I, I can slide them inside those pockets for my storage. Um, now I used to have these pockets, these are actually made for those small tabbed um, pieces, but there's a gusset on here that's so big um, and it's kind of bulky for my storage. I couldn't fit all of my dies that I wanted in my little containers, so I wanted something more flatter. Ideally, if you guys are looking for a pocket, use the Spellbinders pockets. Um, it works perfectly for that. But, um, and they're sturdy, oh my gosh, they're like 10 times the weight of these, these thinner, totally Tiffany pockets. But I'll list these down below if you guys are interested um, um, about how I store them like this. I will list them below. We're going to talk more about them, but I'm going to just go through this little container first. Now this is my 4x6 stamp set. For these, um, I use a lot for my stamp sets. Um, the same pocket that I use for my dies with the magnetic sheet, I use for my stamps. Now again, I only um, keep 100 stamps. And every time I say that, I think, gosh, that's, that's a lot of stamps. <laughs> but um, I have three extra tabs in here, so I can buy three more stamps if I wanted. But if I go over again, I will start to purge and take my numbered tabs, um, empty them out. I actually put them in a Simon Says Stamp pocket and then um, even give, give them to my daughters or, or family. Um, but I always, again, I have a template for my magnet and then a template for the inside uh, uh, white liner. But these tabs here are from Spellbinders. Um, Fun Stampers Journey makes them and they're actually wonderful guys. The price point on here is fabulous. I think it's like four dollars a package and you get ten tabs in here. Now I do have to say these are the pockets that I use. These are from the checkout store from Amazon. Now you want a certain size that will fit the Spellbinders um, tabs. Now Avriel used to sell this size you can see the size there. They're five and five eighths by seven and three eighths pockets. But Avriel changed the size of their pockets, so I, I can't find these size from Avriel anymore. That's why I went to the checkout store brand. Um, but the size that you need and would that will fit your file tabs are the let's see, the five and five eighths by seven and three eighths. Those fit perfectly. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to there. But um, these are actually some more file pockets that I have that will fit my 4x8 stamp sets. They will actually probably fit a slimline set, a, a regular slimline, but um, I don't have a storage place for it, so I don't use them very often. Now I had my label maker you just saw. I picked that up at Walmart, but Amazon does sell it. Um, the file tabs that I showed you are from the storage bins that I, from Spellbinders. I can't part with them because they're such quality. I do use the Simon Says Stamp pockets and the Simon Says Stamp inserts for when I do purge. I put them in there. And then these pockets here are what I store my my stencils in. I, um, I do put a liner in there. We'll grab a couple of these and grab our stencils. And I'll show you how I use. These are from, these pockets, um, I would say are not the best quality. They're from Totally Tiffany. Um, and sometimes the sides do like to tear a little bit. Um, if you use your stencil a lot. So, but they, they work for me. And I just, um, I haven't investigated any other pockets for my stencils um, until I'll, 
I can use these up. I have a couple packages, but until I can use them up, I'll just continue using them. Now these are from Totally Tiffany too. These are called Fab Files. These are actually files that are made for those containers that I took the lid off of. Um, these are actually not only file tabs, but they are pockets too. And they are super duper heavy duty guys. These um, are, I know they're like reinforced on the back. You can see here, there's like a seam line, but they're very strong pockets. And this is what I use to store my six by six stamp sets. Um, now, I do want to let you know that the price of these pockets, you get five in a package, um, and they're a little less than five dollars each package. So you're, it's, it ends up being like 90 cents for each file tab. But if you do get the box, which I don't think they sell anymore, but you also get some file tabs in there too. But um, they do still sell the six by six um, file fabs. Um, and I'll link it below, but they're they're fabulous if you want the investment. They're perfect for stencils, uh, stamps, and your your embossing folders. Okay, I'm heading over here because I have, um, we're gonna grab one of these inserts here and I'm gonna also grab my, one of my file tabs. I don't have any blank ones, so we're going to have to make one. I don't like to number my dies, and so we're going to grab the pockets, the file tabs, and um, some tape. I like to tape my backing white backing sheet to my file tab um, for when I pull out the die, it sticks, and I, it's just better. We're actually going to create two of those, so I'm going to grab one more line or back piece. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing you. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, I have my six by six stencil. Um, I'll show you how I, or stencil, my embossing folder. I'll show you how I store that in just a little bit too. Okay, we're gonna grab our label maker. Label maker I picked up at Walmart, but I think Amazon sells it. I'll link it below. And while we're in this bin, I have my little quart size dollar box of freezer bags. That's what I use for my six by six paper pads. I just keep the box in there. But these are my magnetic sheets. My magnetic sheets um, are from this brand. I get them on Amazon. I actually picked up a new package. Um, they, they, they sell them in all different kinds of sizes. I have the eight and a half by 11, but I know they have five by sevens and I know they have um, eight by tens. I used to use the eight by tens, but found that the eight and a half by 11 works better. You can see they're adhesive backed. I just love the quality of these. I have no problems with my dies um, sticking to these at all. Um, and they cut easily with my trimmer. And so this is the package that I use. Um, nothing goes to waste with these magnets. Um, I think the price point's pretty decent on them. Um, and again, they have different sizes. I'm gonna show you how I cut them and use them for my, my filing system. I actually have another box filled with scraps. And you can actually stick them together um, for your die storage also. You don't have to use full sheets like I use. But yeah, I keep the scraps too. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera up on top so I don't make you dizzy anymore. And we are gonna store some things, okay? We're gonna set everything aside and we're gonna start off with our small die storage. And again, Fun Stamper's Journey sells the the better quality pockets and the inserts. Um, I used to use them, but it was too bulky. So I ended up using the thinner pocket from Totally Tiffany. And um, I put a magnet on it. I just, if I go through my scraps, I can use my scrap. Usually for the small die pockets, I can use my scraps. This is a Simon stamp, so I usually take the Simon label and stick it on the front. I don't know why I do that. Just maybe for visuals when I create for them, <laughs> I can go to their product. I do like to take their, their envelope and put it in the back. Actually, with all of my packaging, I'll take the, the, the inserts that they include. I will put it in the back of my storage pockets. Um, for if I do purge, um, I have the package to go with it. 
I'm going to go ahead and create a label. And again, this little label maker I picked up at Walmart. It's, it's pretty inexpensive. And I use the paper labels because um, to me it's just easier to remove and um, I prefer the paper. But they have clear and then they have a gloss label. I'm going to stick this down and that's how I store my small dies. Sentiment dies usually go in these pockets and then they go in that top drawer. Okay, this is the package that I use or the pocket that I use. Um, I do take the flap that's on the pocket and I trim it off. This, I haven't been able to find a size for the Spellbinders file tabs. That's been real tricky for me and I've searched. Um, the size of these pockets are four and a half inches by five inches. Now, I, like I said, I'm gonna trim off the top part of the pocket, but I'm, I'm leaving that little extra flap area just so my tab will fit in it and look a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm gonna grab one of my file tabs. Again, these file tabs are from Spellbinders, um, Fun Stamper's Journey brand, and these don't exactly fit in these pockets. Now, again, if you were to use the Totally Tiffany pocket, you don't have to do this. If you were to use the Spellbinders pocket that it's originally made for, um, it fits right in there. But since I switched the pocket to make it a flatter pocket, um, I have to trim these file tabs. That's another reason why I didn't share how I store my small files with you. But I'm just using my tape. It's double-sided adhesive tape. It's actually tape from the card kits from Spellbinders. Um, I added one piece on, on, to, on my um, on my insert here and I line it up from corner to corner and you can see the clear tab left over. I'll put that in my paper trimmer and just trim it. The, the file tab pockets are easy to trim and the only ones that I do trim are the small ones. So this way it just fits, it gives me a little extra room for my small die storage. So that's how I store it. And then again, if I want to put a magnet on it, I use my magnetic sheets. But um, these are the pockets from Spellbinders that they're made for. And it's just, I, I don't open them up all the way when I did use them. Um, they slide right in beautifully. You can see here, you don't have to trim, but this is an option. And, and then this quality pocket is very, very strong. And these are pretty inexpensive too. I'll least leave these gusseted pockets down below if you guys are interested in the small die storage. So that's an option. Okay. So that's my small die storage. We're going to make a little room and we're going to move along to our large die storage and stamp storage. Now this is what I use, okay? I have the Spellbinders large file tabs, and then I have the checkout store um, pockets here. And again, you want, let me see, you want the five and five eighths by seven and three eighths inch file pockets to hold your file tabs. I'm gonna create four pockets today. So what I like to do is Grab two, put them together, put them in my trimmer, trim off that top um, so we don't have the closure on it. And I'm going to actually take my insert and take our file tab here. I want to, this is a very heavy duty file tab, guys. It is clear. Let me grab my label maker. You can see it will lift up the label maker. Um, it's very heavy duty and I and I like it too because one side's smooth and one side has a little bit of texture. I need to trim my pocket just a little bit more so it fits, fits in there nice. Usually I line up my insert with the, um, the pocket itself and then I cut. But this is going to work out better. So there's two here and then I'm going to grab these two, trim off the closure part. So now we just have a pocket, no closure. You could probably do more than two at a time, but sometimes they like to stick together when you when you trim it. Okay. Next, we'll move our trimmer out of the way and we're gonna grab our file tabs. I'm gonna grab a couple more. So we have four file tabs and I have four inserts. Now I like to tape down my insert. I like a white background. This just helps me see the product that's in it better, whether it's stamps. 
Um, and I also like to keep the original packaging behind that insert. Um, again, there's two different sides to this file. You have a smooth side and I'm gonna tape, I'm gonna add some tape to the smooth side. I just, I don't add too much, but I just add enough to where my uh, insert will stick. I actually tape down my inserts because when I pull them out of my package, um, I wanted the insert to go with it. Just for video purposes too, it just looks cleaner for you guys. Um, and you can see the product better. I tape down the insert to my file tabs. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all four. And once we have all four done, um, for stamps, I would just put one on in the inside of the pocket and then that's my stamp storage. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> okay, again, I like to name mine, label mine with numbers, but I need to do that with my dies, but I'm, I'm not that disciplined yet. <laughs> I kind of like that getting. Okay, these are my magnetic sheets. Again, these are eight and a half by 11. I don't know how to pronounce the brand name, but I'll list them below. Now I have an insert for my magnetic um, sheet, or actually a guide. I like to put the size on this piece. Now the inserts for my file tabs measure five inches by six and a half inches. So that's what I'm gonna cut my, my magnetic sheet down to. So we're gonna have our five by six and a half inch sheet and then we have this little piece on top. Now I actually create some more pockets with that top piece. Um, if you want to stretch out your magnetic sheets, you could take your leftover piece and cut it in two and make two more pockets with this magnetic sheet. But I like kind of like a uniform size for my dies. So I'm going to trim it down again at five inches, flip my magnetic sheet over and trim it down to six and a half inches and keep these two pieces. So this is the full sheet kind of separated. I'm going to remove the release paper and I need to make sure that when I adhere the magnet, I'm adhering it to the plastic side of my file tab. You don't want to adhere it to the, the white insert that you just added. But that's how I basically add my magnetic sheets. They fit beautifully inside those pockets. It's a little bit of, of work, but I don't mind it. It looks very clean and organized in my, my craft room. And when you add your mag magnetic sheet to it hides your tape which is not really a big deal for me. Um, if you use it for stamp storage, you're gonna see your tape behind there, but that's okay. If you don't wanna add your tape to it, you don't have to for your stamp storage. So I have two full pockets. Now with the leftover pieces here, the smaller ones, I'll take those same pockets and just add that magnetic sheet, the smaller piece to the very top. This works out great for stamp and die sets, um, for like the Mini Delight from Ulta New, or some small three by four stamp sets that have dies that aren't too many. That works out, you can see here, perfectly for those. So I'll create a couple of those too with the leftover piece. I'll do the same with this file pocket. And that's how I store my large dies. So this is the extra piece that I'll throw in my little scrap bin. But you know what guys? I actually took this piece and trimmed it. You can use mag magnetic magnets for so many things. Um, I actually trimmed down a piece. You can, you can, but trim that piece in half and butt them up against each other to put them on a small um, die storage pocket. But I trimmed a small piece and put it on my glue. The other day, I, I it, my glue comes with a green long pin and. I must have brushed it on the floor or something because I couldn't find it. I had to pull out one of my regular pearl pins, but um, I thought I have so much of this magnetic scraps that I'm gonna add some to my glue bottle. So that's what I did with this piece. I, I just removed the release paper, added a thin strip, and now I can add my pin to my glue bottle without losing it. So a little extra tidbit to do with your magnets. <laughs> so that is how I store my dies my stamp of dies and my small dies using the magnetic sheets. We're gonna go ahead and take our die set here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add them. You can see how strong the magnet, my, the magnet is. Even though it's thin, it's pretty strong. 
and then what I do is remove the tape off of the packaging if there is some and then if I need to trim down the packaging if it's a thin packaging insert I can fold it but spellbinders are pretty it's like cardboard so I actually trim it off but I'll put my die in the pocket and then put the packaging behind it again you could skip this part but um, I just like like knowing the brand behind it I suppose I'm gonna print up a label for this and then we'll just remove the release paper and add this to the top left corner of our die storage and that's good to go so that's my large die storage pretty easy peasy stamps are again using the same method without the magnet so I have um, cover plates too. cover plates I don't add I don't use magnets if, if I have a die that will fit in a small die pocket or a large die pocket I won't add a magnetic because it's just one item in my pockets and so I just slide my die in there for cover dies. Stamps, I put the packaging behind it again and then just slide in my stamp set. And this is where that white insert comes in handy. You could actually see the sentiments. I'm gonna go ahead and print out a label for this and then this one is good to go. That's how I store my stamps. <laughs> and I'm really happy with the way this is. The pockets are pretty strong. I don't have a problem with them tearing once in a while. They'll, they'll tear, but I use these pockets, these file tabs, and these magnetic sheets. So um, this will be listed below if you guys are interested in this part. Most asked question. <laughs> and it's pretty cost effective too. Now these are for my large 6x8 stamp sets and for my slimline dies now. I'm not sure if I want to use the 6x8 pockets or the four by eight pockets. But so far, um, Spellbinders came out with the large slim lines. So, and their large die of the month club kit package fits perfectly inside these pockets. So I just keep them on their packaging with the tape and then I um, file them like this. This is just easier for me. If I have any bits and pieces left over, I'll put it in the back. I don't worry about labeling the club dies because the packaging is labeled for me. But for my stamp sets, I do like to transfer them. So I'll put my six by eight stamp sets inside the large pockets here. And then on the back side, I'll just add the insert. And then I'll also add any leftover pieces that I colored in. And then that's how I store my six by eight dies. Go ahead and label the very top. And these go on the very top of my colored cardstock um, shoe box <laughs> box. I don't have very many six by eights, but that's where I put those dies too. And these again are from Avery L. The pockets are, and then the inserts. I just use some cheap cardstock. Now for my six by six stamp sets, um, again I'm using the Fab Files, and these are nice quality. You can see they're reinforced really well. I do add an insert. Um, now most of the six by six stamp sets have clear plastic. This is what the package looks like guys. And again, there's just five and they're meant to go in this container again. They're meant to be a filing system for your six by six file container. And I don't know why they don't sell those no more. Um, maybe because the tops kept cracking on them or maybe they're just really popular. I don't know, <laughs> but um, any kind of, I would say any kind of seven by seven container you have would fit these files. Okay, let's remove these from the package. What I like to do, since um, the six by six stamp sets have the clear film over the top that has the imprint, I like to keep that on there, um, but it is larger than the stamp itself. You can see it overhangs here. Um, so I'm just gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm gonna trim off the excess just so it's a lot nicer. Just line it up and trim off the left and then the right side here, or the top and bottom, depends on how you put it in your paper trimmer. <laughs> we'll toss the excess away. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna kind of eyeball measure the, um, the six by six um, packaging. 
This is gonna go in the back of the pocket. And then I'll just slide in my six by six stamp set. Now, this doesn't have a gusset on it, and obviously the rubber stamps that are six by six um, have a little bit of depth to them. So it does um, leave a little bit of an opening. Um, I don't mind it though, because when you put them all together, it flattens out. Let's put them in our little file box you can see here. But they file beautifully. That's how I store my six by six background stamps. And again, I adjusted this box, it has the lid. Um, I cut mine off, <laughs> but I love those. It's a shame I can't find them for you. They have eight by eights, if you guys are interested in the eight by eights. So we have the Fab Files, five in a package, um, and they average about 90 cents each. They're a little less than $5 each package, but it's, for me, an investment. Those pockets aren't gonna break down. Um, I also use these pockets to store my six by six embossing folders. I'm gonna grab an insert here, grab one of my pockets, and I'm gonna go ahead and, in. the pocket size is not a complete square, so I gotta figure out which way this insert goes. We'll slide this in. Now I don't label my six by six embossing folders only because the ones that I have are already labeled on top of them. Um, I have some Sunny Studio ones and Alta New. They all label their embossing folders on top. So it works out perfect that I don't have to add a label. But I do like to keep the packaging behind it. And um, that's how I store my, my large embossing folders. Um, I'm gonna grab that container and just put this. I don't have too many, but I keep them in there. And this container is actually seven inches wide. So if you guys have a container that's seven inches wide, these file tabs will fit in it. Okay, this, you're probably gonna ask how I store my smaller embossing folder. So this is a binder from Fun Stamper's Journey. Um, I took out the, the photo pockets that were in here and I went on Amazon and got some vinyl pockets and I trimmed the tops off and then that's how I store my embossing folders. I have two of these for the smaller standard embossing folders and I set them up inside my first right cabinet, um, the taller cabinets that were in my craft room. Now for stencils, I'm gonna be using the Totally Tiffany 6x6 stencil pockets. Now I do add inserts to these. Now these pockets I, oh, have a tendency to tear on me um, and these are, called Large Stamp Die and Stencil Pockets from Totally Tiffany. These measure six and three quarter inches by six and a half inches. And they come 25 pockets in a pack. Um, they don't tear as much as the smaller medium stamp and die storage pockets. So, um, and I have a, quite a few packages, but they store my stencils beautifully. And I, uh, there's enough in the package to where if it tears, I could replace it, but, um, I like the way these look, and so I'm not too concerned about the quality of these pockets. If I can find a better quality pocket, um, I'll let that. I'll let you know. Um, I don't know if you guys do know this, but on my blog, I have my Craftus Essentials. Well, well, all the stuff here is um, listed, but I also have how I store my stamps and dies section. If you guys want um, to head over there, that there's links and stuff on on all of this over there but that's how I store my stencils. Now I do use the file fabs for my stencils. I separate them um, with backgrounds and shapes and scene building, but um, that just helps me for when I create a scene and want a cloudy background, I know to go directly to the scene building. So these are the pockets that I use for that. <laughs> this is the cardstock that I use, the cheap cardstock usually for my background stamps, um, not my file pockets my inserts basically. Um, I picked this up at Walmart and it's very, very inexpensive. I think there's 250 in, a, in this pack. Um, it's a lighter weight. I'd say it's like, it says 110 pound, but it's, my gauge would be 80 pound. <laughs> Maybe it's just cause it's not cover, but um, it's a lighter weight cardstock, but it works perfectly for my insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and this gives you some information, um, the goods and the bads, <laughs> and my socks. <laughs> but um, I'm, as I put stuff away, if you have any questions for me, I'll do my best to answer them down below. Um, it may take me a little while, but I will go for it. 
Um, my drawer units, again, I picked up at um, Amazon, and I'll list them down below too. But they've worked out really great for me. Um, they're a little tricky. You have to put them together, just a warning. They don't come like this. I had um, me and my daughters actually put these together, uh, the drawer units, um, but it works out great. Now these little, again, I'm not too big on my small die storage. I might be switching this up. When I do, I will let you guys know. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is like my first kind of walkthrough video. If it's too dizzy, you guys need to let me know <laughs> because um, I tried to go really slow so the camera wasn't shaking too much. But um, I know I could possibly um, make you guys a little dizzy with the video today. I hope I didn't do that, but um, let me know if there's any more videos that you want me to create um, or if you want a more in-depth uh, craft room tour. I have um, basically you, you, I showed you the guts of the craft room. The rest of the drawers and stuff just have extra supplies and stuff. Fo uh, fun foams and towels and stuff like that. Um, pattern papers and such but um, but that's basically it guys I want to thank you so much for putting up with me the whole 45 minutes um, I hope I didn't bore you too much and I hope you had a nice cup of coffee while I did a little chit chatting and again if you have any questions um, just let me know down below and I'll try to separate everything when I list it below in the description area in case you guys want to check it out have a fabulous day guys we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.